Hello, everyone. Thanks. Hello. Great turnout. Very nice. <laughs> well, it's great to be here. Let's hope that this thing works. There we go. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about something that you probably hear a fair amount about. But uh, for me, at your age, it would have been a pretty, pretty new uh, topic. And that's on becoming an entrepreneur. So I'm much older than you guys. And it's been, it, but it was actually quite a bit. I was more than twice your age before I actually decided that that's, what, that's the jump, that's the leap I wanted to take. Um, and so I, I say one country doctor's recipe because I had already gone through medical school, I was practicing medicine, I had uh, struggled with trying to find something that was even more rewarding to me and it took me a long time to figure out that I really need to take the plunge into entrepreneurship to make my life feel fulfilled. So I'm hoping that some of you guys out there, if that's the passion that you have, if that's really the direction you want to go, that you figure it out quicker than I did, because then you get, get to have fun for longer. Um, but there's a lot to it. It's a lot of work. And so I'm going to quickly go through some of the pearls about figuring it out and what you do once you do figure it out. So let's just talk about it real quickly. We're going to talk about planning for success. Planning is extraordinarily important. I'm going to talk to you about getting started, what, what to do once you figure out that's what you want to do how to do it a little bit with selling the dream and then ultimately delivering. And so once that's been accomplished, if you can really get through that whole cycle and you had a good time, then you'll probably want to do it again. And that's where rinse, recharge, reflect, and repeat comes. So planning for success. I'm going to talk fast because I've only got, I think, 18 minutes. Planning for success. I think this is the most important step, and this is where you guys need to start. Um, first of all, do you really want to be an entrepreneur? I mean, it sounds sexy. It's the thing to do in Silicon Valley. Um, but there, it is the hardest thing you'll ever do if you, if you, if you decide to, to, to go after it. Or there certainly aren't a lot of things that are harder than really trying to get a company or an idea off the ground that, that you really believe is going to change the world. And I think if it isn't something you believe is going to change the world, it might not be something you want to go after. Um, the second thing is, what are the identifiers out there that this might be what you need to do? One of the things for me was I couldn't find a job that was satisfying enough for me. And I realized the only jobs that really looked satisfying were those entrepreneurs that had really done special things and, and, and continued to lead those efforts. So I couldn't find the job I wanted. I really finally came to the conclusion I needed to create the job. It, it needed to be something that I actually started for it to really be satisfying for me. Very personal thing. The next thing is, I mentioned expertise because you guys, you don't have a lot of expertise at your age yet compared to what you will have, but you already know that you've got certain aptitudes, certain things you're really good at, certain things you really like doing. And uh, I used to be at a company called IDEO, a product design firm that probably many of you have heard about. And one of the things we used to say at IDEO is when you build a multifunctional team, which is what we did to do great product development, <sighs> You want to find people that have the characteristic of it. We call it a T. And the T is it's shaped like a T because the, the top of the T is that you're broad, that you have a lot of interest in a lot of things and a lot of capabilities and a lot of things. So you could work well in a cross-functional team and wear a lot of hats and, and really help with this product design process or product ideation. But the deep part of the T, cap, think of a capital T, um, is to have depth in one area that really can contribute. So to have that depth, you, really, you, want, you want depth in an area and you want to have breadth. And uh, you need both of those to be an, a successful entrepreneur, I think. But you've got to know where your expertise is or where you want it to be. When you add that to that expertise and that, 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 that excitement for an area, passion for really making something happen, Passion is the key element, because when those two come together, that's where magic happens. But it all has to start with some really serious planning. And this is, this is what it took for me, even in my 30s. For you guys, you get to do it in your teens, if you haven't done it already. And that is to think way out where you want to be. And uh, I found that that was the most important step in my life, in terms of really turning my career around. And there's this quote from Louis Pasteur. It's called, uh, luck favors the prepared mind. The more you put into figuring out where you want to go, the more likely you are to see luck when it falls in your lap. And for me, it literally took sitting down and saying, where do I want to be 20 years from now? And I had to, you know, it took some fantasizing about what would be the absolute most exciting thing I could imagine myself doing. And then 
extrapolating if that's what I were, if that's really the most exciting thing I could imagine having is a career 20 years from now, where do I need to be 10 years from now to get there? And then if that's true, well then where do I need to be five years from now? And pretty soon you've backed up to talking about a year out and six months out and a week away and you start to realize that there are steps you need to take today to get to your goals for a week to hit that 20 year goal. Maybe you guys need to be thinking 40 years. For me, I didn't have 40 years uh, worth of career to think about. Let's say you've decided that that's the step you want to take. What do you do next? First, <clears throat> stay true to your dream. I say that because that passion word again. What is it that you really, really want to get out of this and what is it you want to achieve? Do something that means a lot to you. This is, you need to follow your dreams, not your parents' dreams, right? Not the dreams of your boyfriend or your girlfriend, but your own personal dreams. Not something because you think it is something that people will think is cool, but something that you, deep inside, think is the coolest thing in the world. That's where you want to try to make a difference because it is so hard to be an entrepreneur, you're going to need to be that excited about it to get through all of the valleys that come with the hills and, and excitement of, of, of actually doing it. The next little pearl for you is <clears throat> don't start with a solution. Don't say, I found this cool technology, now what am I going to do with it? Because this is, you know, I really want to be a part of this technology. Think about problems. Really think about things that you'd like to see changed in the world. That thing that you're passionate about changing is the thing you're most, most likely to be successful changing, but it's also critical that you start by taking the attitude that you're going to understand this problem better than anybody else because the, solution, the best solution is going to really fall out of understanding the problem and sometimes understanding the problem is the hardest and most important step and you'd be surprised how many people skip it. Very, very importantly, find people that have been there and done it before because uh, at a very early stage you're going to want that advice, and you're, you're so lucky to be here in Silicon Valley. If you decide you want to go after something, there's no better place to find absolutely passionate people that love sharing their, their stories and love helping you to avoid some of the mistakes that they've made. Selling the dream. This is a very big concept. I'm throwing a lot of things at you, but one of the, the most important thing that you do when you put a company together, put an effort together, it doesn't have to be a company, it could be a service, it could be uh, something within, you know, you can build a company but you can also be entrepreneurial within an organization, you can be entrepreneurial within a community, you can be entrepreneurial within a school. There's a lot of ways to be an entrepreneur but the most important decision you'll make is who's going to do it with you. And so I put team bigger because even venture capitalists, the first thing that they look at, the most important thing to them is who is it that I'm going to be backing. The next most important thing is am I backing something important? Is it a big enough opportunity? Is it going to make a big enough difference? Is it going to make enough money if, if, it's, if it's a return on investment? And it might not be money you're investing, but you want to return on whatever it is you're investing, whether it's your time, your resources. The idea which most people put first is actually the least important of the three. It's important, it's one of the top three, but you've got to think about it in this order if you really want to optimize your chances for success. Kill them quick, what does that mean? This is a huge lesson that I learned from one of my mentors. The most valuable thing you have is your time. So you come up with a lot of great ideas, you, you think you understand the problem, the best thing you can do with that idea in terms of really getting the most value out of it is do everything you can to figure out why it won't work and figure it out as quickly as possible because your most valuable asset is your time and so because you can only do so many things even in your life and, and you, you only have your bandwidth and so you want to make sure that you spend that bandwidth on things that are really really meaningful and have a really serious chance of success so if it's not going to work, you want to know it as quickly as possible. I'll say this over and over again. Leverage that passion. You've decided to do something you're passionate about. Now be a missionary. That's, if you believe it can change the world, you need to be able to sell that vision. It's going to help you raise money. It's going to help you bring people together. It's going to help you keep people focused on the same, on the same solution. 
And then ultimately, to get people to join you, you need to build trust. And I think that that's, you know, it's, it can't be understated how, imp overstated how important that is. Building trust comes in a lot of different ways, but you've got to get people to invest in you and your idea. And so it takes, you know, as you know, it takes a long time to build trust. It takes only a moment to destroy it. So integrity, honesty, those are the things people are going to be looking for. Passion for making a difference and changing something that is important to you and, and convincing them that it could, it could be important to a lot of people. And then ultimately you make those promises, you build that team, you get people to commit their time and resources. Now you've got to deliver. Well, number one is stick to your dream, never settle. It's one of the, the mantras that we keep saying over and over. Number two is it takes a lot of work. You look at the people you made promises to. It's the investors, it's your family, it's your team members, it's your potential customers, but most importantly, you made a promise to yourself and you really owe it to yourself. It's gonna be tough. There's gonna be a lot of obstacles. There are as many obstacles as there are uh, successful days and you just need to get one more successful day than you get obstacles to get through it and, to, and have a good successful outcome. Focus and execution. The beauty of focus is if you can stay on task and you stay on the problem, you can get there. This is the first company. Uh, this isn't the one that Eugene mentioned, but this is a company that I started in my garage when I finally figured out what I wanted to do. Um, and Baxano was just bought, uh, or just actually an announcement was made last month that it was going to be purchased by a public company. It's a, a minimally invasive spine surgery company. Uh, I'm a physician, so I leveraged the things I knew. That's where my T was deep. Um, but I went after a problem that I was really, really passionate about. I was really frustrated to see the way patients were treated in my spine, in, in, the, in the spine surgery patients that I took care of as an anesthesiologist. I thought there was huge room for improvement. And it was frustration that led to there's got to be a better way and putting a great group of people around it. And we've treated 6,000, we've had 6,000 surgeries so far, and I think it's going to revolutionize spine surgery. So I really think it all started with the passion and, and, and the drive to make a difference. What did Baxano start with? It started with, an, it, it, it did start with a problem. The problem led to a set of tools. The tools went into the operating room to prove that they worked. And then you start proving it to surgeons in, in, in conferences, and then you start selling it. So it very quickly blossoms into something that gets more and more complicated and more and more intensive. And eventually, chances are, if you're the guy that started it, or you're the girl that started it, it's going to outgrow you. Just like you guys are going to outgrow your parents, it's going to need to live a life of its own. And that's what's happened to Baxano for me, one of the most exciting and, and also painful things, thank you, is that it can outgrow you and that you have to move on and it moves on and you, what that means is you get to do it again. Remember I told you, rinse and repeat. Rinse, relax, and repeat. Well, this is, well, that rinse, recharge, reflect, and repeat. Um, so this is the new one. Back in the garage, this is uh, Pulson that was mentioned. This is a fitness technology that we think is going to revol revolutionize the way people exercise. It also has wonderful implications for healthcare. It's so exciting. I've got the engineers waiting for me right now, so they, they gave me a break. They cut me slack and I ran over here to talk to you guys. I hope that I can help you guys take better advantage of your garages. I don't know how your parents are going to feel about the cars getting a little more sun, but there's real opportunity in those garages. That's Paul Sun. That's the company. You'll be hearing things, I hope. So the why. Why do this? Why work so hard that you, can, you, you can't even imagine how hard you work? Well, this is, this is something that really stuck with me. Life is not a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving safely in one pretty and well-preserved piece, but to skid across the, across the line broadside, thoroughly used up, worn out, leaking oil, shouting, Geronimo. That'll resonate with some of you, I'm sure. So how do you do it? This is Amadeus. Neither a lofty degree of intelligence nor imagination nor both together go to the making of genius. Love, love, love. That is the soul of genius. It really is about following your passion as some geniuses have done so well. You don't have to be a genius. You just have to really care about the outcome. So remember what I said. Go out there and find a mentor. <laughs> 
The greatest problems always deserve the greatest mentors. That's how big problems are solved. And the mentors don't always look like you might think. But they've been there. <laughs> they've done that. It's a big step, that first step. This is the Berlin Wall. It was a big step, but it was an important step. It was important because it made a difference. So go out there and make a difference. That's what I have to say to you. <laughs> so anyway, thank you very much. <laughs>